When you're in the market for a new cell phone, but aren't ready for that two-year commitment, make Yakety Yak Wireless your first stop. Our experienced sales staff will help you choose the phone that's best for you. We carry a vast array of basic and smartphones, and at Yakety Yak, you can try it before you buy it. Looking to save some money? We sell used and unlocked phones and provide the best in iPhone repair. Come into Yakety Yak Wireless for all your mobile phone needs. Okay, today we are going to show you how to fix a broken iPhone 5. This one is pretty well shattered down by the home button as you can see. Um, we're going to start uh, by showing you that it still works and uh, then what tools we're going to use. Uh, we need to turn that off. Always turn off your iPhone before you work on it. So, uh, a large suction cup, a small suction cup, these are great tools, a pentalobe screwdriver to get the bottom screws out, a Phillips head to take out the interior screws, a spudger, um, that's a metal one, we also have a plastic one, and then we'll also either use a razor blade or an X-Acto knife um, as the tolerances are pretty tight. And there's our plastic spudger. Now, um, since the glass is broken up pretty bad, we're actually going to tape it down. Just don't tape over the home button. So we're going to go right above the home button and just get some tape on there. <clears throat> this will sometimes allow the large um, uh, the large suction cup to work to get the screen out because the screen is a very tight tolerance. First thing we need to do is remove the two bottom screws. They are pentalobe screws. Don't try and use anything other than a pentalobe screwdriver or you will strip them quickly. So we're going to go ahead and remove those two. Okay, now comes the hard part, getting the screen off. First we're going to try the orange suction cup, but I have a feeling this is broken so badly it's not going to work. So we're going to try and apply it here. Nothing. We're going to try it again, different direction. And nothing there either. Okay, so next we're going to go to the suction cup. And you can pull on it. If you've ever taken apart an iPhone 3GS, this is much tighter tolerance. Um, so in a lot of cases, what you're going to need to do is get in here with a straight edge razor blade or a spudger, being careful not to damage the lip around the phone. So I use one hand to pull up and the other hand to try and get underneath between the uh, edge of the screen and the uh, bezel here. And it is a very difficult thing to do. When the screen is only broken a little bit, that large orange suction cup works great. In this case, you just got to kind of work and go real slow, otherwise you will ding up that edge. So, we're going to continue to work here, and I should just about get it. One other thing you'll notice is that since this phone is broken so bad, as I go to pull it up, I'm going to break off the home button. Um, I pop it up a little ways and then use the orange spudger to kind of go around and release it a little bit more to where I can get my fingers underneath it. Once I get my fingers underneath it, then you can start to pull on the screen. All the connections on the screen are on the top side, so you don't have to worry about breaking anything. So you always go from the bottom, and you'll notice here, right as I start to pull, the home button cleanly snaps off. Um, we're going to save that because we've got to uh, get apart from it later. So what we're going to do is we take the spudger here and get underneath the screen and get the screen to lift. And it lifts very much like the iPhone 3GS screen does. Just a lot thinner and a lot more snugly fit in there. Okay, so here's the inside of the iPhone 5. One of the main differences between this and the 3GS is the 3GS you can just pop off the three cables up top. Um, in this case, we should disconnect the battery first, um, like the iPhone 4. So there's two screws there and there. Um, that cover a shield that hold down the battery. So we're going to take those screws off and we're just going to, all we're going to do is disconnect the battery so that way we don't shock anything when we work on it. That EMI shield just lifts straight off. A pair of tweezers will get it off of there. These are ESD safe tweezers I'm using so I don't create any sort of static inside the phone. Okay. Now you can see the 
where the cable connects in for the phone right here. And we're just going to pop that thing off. There we go. So now the iPhone's disconnected. That's all we're going to do at that point. We're going to go to the top EMI shield now, which covers the connectors for the screen. There's three screws. You can see here, all three of these screws are the same size, so you don't have to worry about misplacing them. There's one. One of the things with my videos is I like to show broken iPhones rather than doing a video with a phone that hasn't been broken because it's much easier to take apart. This one you kind of see the struggles we have to go through on it. Okay, this EMI shield lifts from the right to the left. It has a couple little tabs that kick in underneath where the battery is to hold it down. So you just got to kind of gently move it out. You can see me getting in here with the tweezers to kind of free it up a little bit. Once it's freed up, then you can kind of push it against the battery and pop it up. There it goes. You can see those little tabs that are holding it down right there. Okay, three cables. Uh, LCD, digitizer, and then the cable that controls the camera, proc sensor, and front-facing microphone. That's the first one right there. That's also the hardest one to get back down. The next two are going to be for the digitizer and then the LCD. And the LCD one will almost pop off on its own. There it goes. And so now you can see those three cables that we have. Now you take the iPhone itself and put it aside. You're done with it for now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the shield that covers the earpiece speaker. Two screws. They are different size. The top screw is longer. Go ahead and remove that. Okay, now we're going to go and re remove that shield. We just lift it off right here. And then the earpiece speaker actually just pops right off. There's no cables connecting it. You can see it just has little two little gold contacts that it pick up. So that's off. Okay, so that was fairly easy. Now it gets a little more difficult. What we're going to do is we're going to remove this backing plate, which has six screws. You only see five here because remember that home button broke off. The six screws, the four side screws, are exactly the same. The top and bottom screws are different, so make sure and arrange them in a proper manner. So we're going to go ahead and take these screws off. So you see the top screw, first of the two side screws over here. And then I'm going to grab the bottom plate just so you can see that bottom screw that broke off. It goes underneath that tab, sits just like that. There it is. We're going to go ahead and remove that screw as well so we don't we can keep it in alignment with all the rest of them. And then the other two side screws. There we go. Then the backing plate, you can use a spudger and it lifts off pretty easily. It should just lift up, take it out at about a 40 degree angle or so. There it goes. Put that aside. Now what we have to do is we have to remove the flex cable assembly that controls the proximity sensor, the front facing camera, and the noise canceling microphone, and the earpiece speaker. It's all one giant cable. It definitely it comes right out. Um, so you can see here we fold it over and you can see the uh, camera and the microphone right there. Now those gold contacts that's held on with a little bit of adhesive so we use a heat gun. Heat the, the heat gun should be on the low, one of the lowest settings if it's not adjustable. If it's adjustable I have it at 150 degrees. Gently pull up on this. Gently. <laughs> Don't tear it. Okay, that piece is done. The next two things. A lot of the iPhone screens being sold today do not have the retaining ring for the camera and the retaining ring for the proximity sensor. So you'll have to remove those. I use a little bit of heat to heat them up. Don't overheat them or you will warp them. Um, they are a plastic screen. They're hard to see because I'm showing you against black here. But they're the two rings and you're actually going to remove these rings and reuse them. So just go gentle on this. I'm going to get the heat gun here. I'm 
And again, not too much heat or you will warp the plastic camera retaining ring. So move it around, get it kind of pliable. They're actually held against the iPhone screen with adhesive. So you can see me starting on the camera one, and I decided to go to the Prox one because it's easier. So here's the proximity sensor one. It's a box. When you remove these, take note of which side faces against the screen because you're going to want to put them back that same way with the proper side down. The side against the screen will have adhesive on it, um, you know, like melted plastic. We're going to use a little more heat here for the secondary one. And then I use a metal spudger to get up underneath here and I just carefully don't break it because you absolutely have to have it. If you don't have either one of these, your front facing camera will be off center. Um, so it'll it'll capture, it won't get a good picture and then the proximity sensor will cease to work because it won't have the binding mechanism to hold it in place. Okay, there you can see the broken pieces of plastic on that, you know, kind of where it's adhered down. Hopefully later screens will come with these two pieces, but right now they don't, so we have to reuse them. Okay, next thing we have to do is we have to take off the old home button, which should have been part of the screen, but it broke off. It has a flex that's also got an adhesive on it, um, like the top uh, earpiece did. So we're going to remove the two screws, and then we're going to heat it up to get that adhesive off of there and gently lift it. Okay, so there's the first screw. The second screw, they're the same size again. And you can see it folds over, but it's still stuck to the, to the screen. So we're just going to use a little bit of heat. It doesn't take much at all. And then very gently pull. And it should separate nice and easy. There you go. The other thing that we have to get is the actual home button itself. And that's, it fits in this channel, it has a little bit of adhesive around it, and depending on how bad your iPhone is broken, there will be glass stuck to this uh, adhesive. So I just use my fingers to go around and peel the glass off. If any glass is stuck in there and you seat it back down, when you push the screen down, you'll probably break the screen. So make sure you get it good and clean. And by the way, this is actually a customer's phone. This is the second iPhone 5 that I've repaired. So it's not like I've done this a thousand times. I, uh, the total time for me to fix this phone was about 40 minutes. I shortened a couple parts of the video. Uh, mainly it took so long because it was hard getting the screen off. Okay, so we've set down the home button. And now we're going to go and place the uh, flex over it. Don't push down on those gold contacts yet. Put the screws in first, that way you'll know everything is centered properly. And then you can go and push down on the adhesive. Because if you get the adhesive in the wrong spot, obviously the pickups on the, uh, off, the, uh, back, um, off the motherboard of the iPhone won't match. You know, in my opinion, from taking this apart and working with it and the iPhone 4, the iPhone 4 is actually built much better from a design point of view than the iPhone 5 is. The iPhone 5 may not break as easy, but it's the way they have all this adhesive on here, I think, is kind of a cop-out on their part. Okay, so now we need to place the top flex cable. The way to do this is you actually use the noise-canceling microphone or the FaceTime microphone on the front it has a little hole it slots into and so you can place that in there properly. One of the things that's easier to do is to take this proximity sensor uh, retaining ring and actually place it on the proximity sensor itself. Make sure you do it the right direction. Um, the, the jaggedy edge should face away from the proximity sensor so it goes against the screen. And then the other part that you gotta put on is a camera retaining ring. Sometimes you can put this on the camera itself and it'll hold. Um, other times you should just place it against the screen and set the camera into it because it's not on there real tight. You'll see in this case I can't do this because it's going to pop right off. And again, make sure you put this thing down the correct way. Um, depending on how you pull it off, it'll probably have extra plastic around the top part of it. 
that faces the screen. So you can see on this one it's not completely round, it's more squared off at the top side. That's the side that goes against the top of the screen when you put it down. So I'm just going to go ahead and place this on the screen itself. Make sure to get it in the same way so you can see there that it's nice and evenly round at the bottom but more squared off at the top. Okay, once that's in place, we're going to take this uh, FaceTime microphone right here and we're going to put that into its little slot right underneath the camera. And that's what kind of holds the, cam the flux cable in place so you can do the rest of the work you need to do on it. Go ahead and place that down in there. Then the camera slots into its little holder. And the next thing you're going to have to do is set that proximity sensor. It won't lay down completely flush um, if you just push down. You actually have to push the cable in from the side a little bit. So you can see me pushing it in. And once you push it in, then it slots down. And you can see that those gold contacts have a little channel that they go into. So you'll know everything's in place when those gold contacts are set down properly. So that cable's now done. We're going to peel off this adhesive here, or the screen protector, and the back plate's going to go on. Six screws, four side screws are the same, top screw is different, bottom screw is different. Don't mix them up. Speed it up here a little bit for me putting in the screws. It's not that bad of a fix. I'd say that the hardest part on this whole thing is getting the broken screen off and doing it and keeping your patience with it. Because it can, you know, I did shorten the video here. It, it was probably an extra eight minutes that I worked on it before I got to the point where I could get it off comfortably. Straight razors are good, X Acto knives, suction cups. Um, just go slow and be careful on it. Okay, next we're going to take the speaker and we're going to put the speaker back on. And it only goes on one way and it slots down in here. And then we're going to take the retaining ring and put the retaining ring on. And again, two screws top screw is longer, bottom screw is shorter. Okay. And I don't, I put the top screw in first, but I don't tighten it all the way down. I make sure that I get this thing good and centered because you want those contacts to mate up. After I get the bottom screw in and it looks good, I'll go back and retighten the top one. Don't over tighten anything because you can break off the, uh, the dowels that are inside the uh, screen and then you've got to start all over. Okay, now we're ready to put the uh, iPhone back together. Three flex cables. LCDs first, then the digitizer, and last is the proximity camera flex, which is the hardest thing to attach and will take you a while. And I actually don't shorten the video here. I show you that it takes me a, a good minute or so to get the thing attached. So there's the um, LCD. Here comes the digitizer. Nice and easy. And now this screw, now this one on the side. Um, it will physically click into place when you get it. Uh, don't force it. Because if you do, you can bend the gold contacts, and then uh, you possibly ruin your iPhone. So you just kind of slot it around till you feel it kind of get into place, and then click down. And like I said, I didn't shorten this part to show you that it takes about a minute, and it just takes patience. If you're not patient on this part, you'll ruin your iPhone. After you get this clicked down and you start to put the EMI shield in, don't fold the screen all the way back because you'll pop the cables back off. So you've got to kind of hold it upright like I'm doing here. And now it goes in from the battery side and lays down. You'll see the screw holes align. All three of these screws are the same size. Go ahead and put these screws in. After this, we're going to reattach the battery. One of the things you'll see me do 
after I reattach the battery is I'm actually going to turn the phone on before I seat the screen because if it's a bad screen I don't want to go to that trouble of having to pop that thing back off again so you can test and make sure that everything works on the screen then turn it back off then reseat the screen okay we got those in next is going to come the battery go ahead and click the battery down here you can see me pushing it down and then the uh, shield is going to go on two screws for this shield again I believe these are the same size screws as well If you run into any problems as you're doing this, uh, our phone number is 817-399-1000. We also have our website at www.yakitup, that's Y-A-K-I-T-U-P-D-F-W, it's davidfrankwilliam.com. Um, we do repair these. You can send them off to us, and we will uh, repair it same day and send it back to you. So here I'm turning on the screen. And I just make sure that it, uh, you know, that the digitizer responds, it looks okay, and then I'm going to turn it back off and then push down on it to seat it. When you're seating the screen in, um, go from the top, make sure it's very snug in the very top part of the phone, that you don't see any gapping before you try and push down on it. It is a very snug fit. So what I do is I seat the top and I get the top looking about perfect, and then I'll go down to one of the corners in the bottom and work on that. Examiner so seating the top. Once the top's in there, then one of the corners should start to click down. If you still got the adhesive on the or the protector on the front of the screen, don't snap it in, otherwise the screen will get all messed up. So then you just push down from all sides. And again, it is a really, really snug fit. It will scare you on how hard you have to push on this. You'll think you'll break the screen. But if you apply pretty gentle, even pressure, you'll get it just fine. When it's all snug down, it, um, you go ahead and put the bottom screws back in. And then turn it on and test everything. And you are all done. I appreciate uh, everyone watching this video, um, our iPod video that we've done, our iPod 4 video is over 60,000 hits now. I'm hoping that this one enjoys a similar fate. At Yakety Yak Wireless, uh, we do these for instruction videos only. Uh, we don't recommend that you take apart your iPhone because you will void your warranty. We will not be held liable for any damage you caused to your iPhone from watching this video. Again, 817-399-1000. Uh, We're located in Colleyville, Texas, and thanks for watching our video.